Hi everyone! Welcome back to Stamp Cat Stamps, where I share with you the things that I learned from my stamp collection. This is going to be part one of a two-part episode. Today I'll be talking to you about the subject of one of Canada Post's most recent stamp issues, which I have with me here. That's right, today we are going to be talking about the total solar eclipse that is coming up next week, April 8th, this year of 2024. And I'm hoping to attempt some extreme philately during the eclipse, but we'll see how that all goes down. In general, I'm not somebody who's that knowledgeable or into the subject of astronomy. Honestly, I feel like it's every year that I'm hearing on the news or somewhere, oh, there's an eclipse today or there's an eclipse tonight. But then that day rolls around and I never really notice anything happening. But this eclipse is going to be different. It's going to be very special for a number of reasons. To understand why, I had to brush up on some of my basic astronomy. So let's have a look and forgive my very crude and rudimentary setup. As we know, the moon orbits the Earth and the Earth orbits the sun. We get an eclipse when the three are in a straight line. The moon completes its orbit around Earth every 27 days, about every one month. When the Earth blocks the sun from the moon, we see a lunar eclipse at nighttime. And when the moon blocks the sun from the Earth, we see a solar eclipse in the daytime. Now with this logic, why don't we see an eclipse every month, every time the moon makes its orbit around the Earth? Well, it's because the moon's orbit around Earth is actually on a bit of a tilted axis. So solar eclipses are special because the moon is not always at the right angle to line up with the Earth and the sun. And what's even more exciting, in addition to orbiting the Earth on a little bit of an angle, the moon also orbits the Earth in an ellipse or oval pattern. So this means sometimes the moon is closer to the Earth and other times farther as it does its orbit. When the moon is farther away from Earth in its orbit, it cannot fully block out the sun, so a ring of sunlight is always left visible around the moon, and this is called an annular solar eclipse. But when the moon is closer to Earth in its elliptical orbit, it appears bigger in the sky and is just big enough to fully block out the sun, causing a total solar eclipse, which is what we're going to experience on April 8th. Only about 23% of solar eclipses are total versus 42% are annular. In a total solar eclipse, instead of seeing a ring of sunlight around the moon, what we see is something called the corona, which is basically streams of light being deflected off the edges of the moon from the sun's atmosphere. And before and after totality, you can also see different optical effects like Bailey's beads or the diamond ring effect which have to do with the fact that the moon's surface is uneven. It has mountains, craters, and valleys, and sunlight passes or deflects off of those differently. Also, this year, unlike the last total eclipse over North America in 2017, the sun is in some kind of like high electromagnetic state and having lots of flares, which may cause this eclipse's corona to look particularly distinctive. So I've been reading about what to expect from the eclipse, and I've heard that during totality, the light outside is going to get completely dark, the temperature is going to drop, everything's just going to look dimmer and kind of dusky. If there's any nighttime insects or animals, they might start chirping or coming out. It sounds really cool and this is something that I've never experienced before in my life. The last total solar eclipse over Ontario was back in 1979. I wasn't even born yet. And the next one after this is not expected until 2099. I'm probably not going to be around for that one either. Total solar eclipses actually happen on Earth around every 18 months, but because the moon's shadow on Earth is so small, around 0.01%, it is extremely rare to be inside the path of that shadow. And since most of Earth's surface is water, a lot of eclipses when they happen just happen over the ocean or Antarctica or somewhere not really that populated. So having a total eclipse on land at all feels like a really big rarity. On top of all that is the weather factor. If it's a cloudy day over land, you're not going to see the eclipse. So it feels like all of the stars have to align to be able to get to see one. Or I guess in this case, it's the moon has to align. 
Anyway, in my area, the total length of time of totality is only expected to be about one minute long. So even if there's any transient passing cloud cover at all, we might not see the eclipse. Okay, this is supposed to be a stamp channel, so I guess I better talk a little bit more about these stamps. I have here my booklet that I got from Canada Post. It comes in a booklet of 10, and I'll just show you how it looks on the inside here. These stamps were issued on March 14th, 2024, well ahead of the April 8th date so everyone like me can get all excited and learn about the upcoming eclipse. The design shows that moment of totality when the sun's corona will be visible around the moon. You can see rays from the sun's atmosphere and even little flares around the circumference of the moon. Over top of the eclipse is a map, per se, of the cities where totality will pass over Canada, starting at Niagara Falls and ending at Bonavista in Newfoundland. Below are the landscapes from those places, Horseshoe Falls at Niagara and the rocks at Spillers Cove in Newfoundland. Here at the bottom of the booklet, it has places that the path of totality will pass through and the expected time that it's expected to happen. On the back, the booklet says, The moon's shadow will turn daylight to darkness for millions of Canadians on April 8th as a total eclipse of the sun touches parts of all three North American countries for the first time this century. In Canada, skies will darken over a path of totality from southwestern Ontario to eastern Newfoundland and Labrador. The spectacle unfolds over approximately two hours, but peaks in only a few precious minutes of totality when the sun is completely obscured and the glow from the sun's chromosphere and corona frames a perfect silhouette of the moon. With my booklet of stamps, I'm planning to mail some postcards that I designed and get them postmarked on April 8th as well to make a cool philatelic item. But I'm gonna document that in part two of this journey when we actually head out and try to see the eclipse. The whole thing might be a big fail, especially like I mentioned, if it's cloudy. And like I said, the whole thing will be over in one minute, so that doesn't give me a lot of time to fiddle with the settings on my camera or phone or line up the stamps and try to get everything in order, so we'll see how it goes. But I did want to release this video in advance of the eclipse just so that you guys can learn more about it ahead of time and like me, maybe get excited about it and decide if you actually wanna go see it or not. Also, I should mention, just because you're not in the path of totality, it doesn't mean that you won't see the eclipse at all. Outside of that line, some areas will still be able to see the eclipse, but it will be a partial eclipse instead of total. One final thing, there is a really cool video uh, just put up on YouTube by the RPSC, the Royal Philatelic Society of Canada. It is a stamp talk or stamp chat with David Foote, who is an eclipse chaser and philatelist. So eclipse chasers actually travel around the world when total eclipses happen to try and see them and document them. And he has traveled to really cool places all over the world to see eclipses, including places like Antarctica, South Africa, Asia. Um, and along the way, he'll collect philatelic materials and sometimes make some of them himself. His stories about his experiences were super interesting in my opinion. And he also does a really good overview about previous issues of stamps and covers that have been created in past eclipses. So I'll put a link to that in the description below. If you're interested in this topic, I would definitely check it out. Okay, everyone, that's it for now. Please wish us good luck for our weather next week on April 8th here in Ontario. Hopefully it's not going to be too cloudy, but either way, I'll show you guys how everything turns out. Remember, as always, stay safe, including your eyes. If you're going to try to watch this eclipse, make sure that you use proper eye protection. Do not stare at the sun without proper eclipse glasses. Stay safe and stay curious. Bye for now.